Good morning, Olive Grove. As we read our scripture on this morning, and it will be coming from 2 Corinthians 4 and 18. And it says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things that are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen are eternal. Now we are talking about a God that we cannot see, but we know that he's eternal because we can feel him each and every day. His spirit works through us, in us, and for us. Let us pray. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we come to you, Father God, as humble as we know how this morning. Father God, just thanking you for another day. Father God, thanking you for things as well as they are, Father God. Father God, we ask for your forgiveness right now, Father God. We ask you right now, Father God, that you would just forgive us of our unrighteousness, Father God. Father God, we ask you right now that you would touch everyone that's here on today, Father God. Father God, if there are any sick among us, Father God, we ask you right now, Father God, that send a touch from on high, Father God. But Father God, whatever they're ailing, Father God, whatever they're going through, Father God, we know that you are with us, God, because you said that you would never leave us nor forsake us. So Father God, we thank you on this morning. We bless your name on this morning. And we give you all the honor and all the glory. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. I hope you come to bless the name of the Lord today. How many know you serve a God that is everything you need? Somebody say, God is. Ah, he's my everything. Woo, can you mean that? You have nothing to worry about.
seemingly to go to sleep. Well. And seem like all hell just break loose in our lives. The devil releases his angels yeah. and he releases them on our lives and seems like we got something to deal with if it ain't nothing but a little bit of depression every now and then. Right. I know I'm talking to somebody on yeah. this morning. Yeah. Somebody has a substance abuse on this morning. Others may have heart trouble. Some may just can't see, see too good. And somebody looking at me now trying to figure out what I'm saying because they can't hear quite good enough. Well, come on somebody has a blood disorder on this one. Oh, come on, y'all might well come on. Yeah. 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 You say you're naming it and you're claiming on our life. No, I'm just telling you what's on it. Amen. You know what you got. Yeah. You know what you're dealing with. Well, you know your mindset. I'm in here to increase your faith. In Christ Jesus. Yes. To let you know wherever you are, he can meet you there. Yes. You don't have to clean yourself up. He'll do the cleaning. Yes. You don't have to even change your mind. All you got to do is come on in. Yes. Yes. For we all are born in sin. Yes. And we must come into the knowledge of Jesus the Christ. Yes. So we find in Matthew 8, verses 23 through 27. We, we went through all the things in Matthew 8, all, just about all the things in Matthew 8, except for the arguments he had with the scribes and Pharisees, uh, up to this point. Jesus was working hard. Mm -hmm. The Bible says he entered on to, when he entered, when he was entering to his ship, his disciples followed him. Okay. See, as he was working, you know how we work during the day. Most of us, we go to work and sometimes we get a little tired on the job. And we find that one little quiet place in the corner. And we find ourselves drifting on. Until the boss man come around, the boss lady come around, then we up. Like we've been working all the time. Y'all know how it is in your spiritual life. You come into church out, you got your perfume, you got your rouge on, your lipstick and your dressing. Suits on and you're looking mighty sniffy. Come on. <laughs> like you've been working all the time. All right. All right. But all week you've been sleepwalking. Amen. You ain't been doing nothing. Come on, you might as well come on and, and, and tell the truth and shame the devil. Right. You haven't even been reading your Bibles as you should. Right. You haven't been talking to God as you should. Right. Come on, we're hot. We always are lacking somewhere or another in our life. All right. yeah. And Jesus is there to pick us up. Amen. 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 I want you to know that he didn't come to judge you. Amen. He came to bring you from sin right. and to the promised knowledge of God the Father. Yeah. He come to take you from, 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 from your ears and eyes and bring you into the presence of the Lord where all your blessings come from. Amen. I know all the week long you've been hearing and shouting yourselves with the evil thoughts and the lessons of the world, but I want you to know that God has a great lesson for you. Amen. It ain't just this morning, but it's, it can continue on the rest of your life. Amen. But you got to recognize he on board. Amen. I heard somebody say one time, somebody had made somebody mad and they said, Y'all might as well come on, go with me. Right. Right. They see it. If I'm on that church, I'll let you hear something. <laughs> come on, tell it now. Come on, tell it. How many times have you seen it that there's something about it? Well, or thought about it in your mind? Well, if I'm on that church, <laughs> if I can just catch him out on the street just for a little while, Amen. church isn't a place. Church is where you are. Amen. You are the church. Amen. And if Jesus is on board, you just can't do it and say anything. Amen. You know, even when Jesus was tired and the people had worn down, yeah. uh -huh. he still did the job yeah. that God had promised yeah. yeah. to do. Even at the end of his journey, right. when he was hanging on the cross, yeah. he said, Father, Forgive them. Yeah. For they know not what they do. Yeah. He was always on the job. 
I'm glad that I've been serving somebody or someone of my Lord and Savior that never sleeps nor slumber. I'm so glad that he ain't looking down and, and, and frowning at my life, but he's steadily blessing me and steadily picking me up, steadily molding me and changing me to what he wants me to be. I'm so glad that I can call on him in the midnight hour. In the morning time, in the noon day. At night, in the afternoon, I can call on him in my biggest hour because he's on the Lord. I might not be able to feel him or see him, but I know he's there. Because the word, you know, the scripture says, and, and the musicians say that he's there all the time. So he entered in the ship with the disciples. Amen. And the Bible says, and there arose a great tempest mm -hmm. in the sea. Mm -hmm. You know how life is. You know, you get home, all of a sudden the mailman come by and make you mad. <laughs> you get that email, you know, they see your invoices in the email now. You make you mad, and then sometimes if you don't get the email, they see your text about what you owe. You know how the lights seem again to rock in the shape? You know how it is. The other day I was riding in my car taking my grandson to the school. And all of a sudden I already needed some new ties on the front. Y'all need any new ties? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on. I'm in the ship now. Jesus is in the ship, right? Yeah. So I'm riding up the road and all of a sudden I see this box of nails just sitting in the road and Half of them had come out and spread across the road. I said, oh, Lord. Here go these nails. I already need some new time. <laughs> Policeman riding beside. He see the nail, hit the brakes, and speed up. <laughs> <laughs> None of us can stop before we run over the nails. I want you to know something. I went and got some new ties put on the front. It was a now nail in the tie. The <laughs> whole box of little silver, little silver screws, I think that's what it was. Right. The little big, big box. Right. One, one screw in the tie. Right. God is always looking out for us. Amen. 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 Whether we rather recognize it or not, Jesus entered into what we are going into before we get there. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Amen. Before the storm, Jesus knows where you are. Amen. He knows what road you're traveling down. Yes. Amen. Before you get to that roadblock or that little box of nails. Uh -huh. Somebody sings a song that there's a storm out on the ocean. And it's moving. He didn't say this way. He said this here way. <laughs> it's always something coming towards us. If it ain't nothing but old man dead. There's always something in life that we cannot see. That we're either stepping in or we're opening the door to. And we don't know what's on the other side, and we begin to get fretful. All right, all right. But Jesus entered into the ship. Yeah, yeah. All right. Come on. And then his disciples that was with him. Yeah, yeah. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. Amen. As many of us want to claim to be disciples, sometimes we forget that Jesus is on the boat. When we forget that Jesus is on board, we don't even get on the ship sometimes. Thinking that we can avoid the trouble that's coming. Because we see the storm out on the ocean. So what we do, we don't deny, nah, I'm going to ride that boat today. I'm going to get on it tomorrow. The storm is still out there waiting on you. Jesus is saying, come on on the boat. Don't worry about the storm. So then he says, behold, a great there was a great and great tempest in the sea, and so much that the ship was covered with the waves. But he was asleep. 
Y'all ever had anything to wake you up from your sleep? Sometimes we have so much trouble in our life that we can't even go to sleep. And what we do, maybe y'all don't know what I do, I just talk about what I do. What I do sometimes when I can't sleep, now that I got that telephone, I pull out that little telephone and I begin to play games. When that don't work, I turn the TV on and I watch a show. Come on. When that don't work, I pull the Bible out and I start well, reading. Uh -huh. Next thing I know is morning time. Amen. Because the Bible will put you to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> the truth don't be known. Just pick it up sometime and start reading. And see, don't you go on to sleep. Amen. So we find that the ship was covered by waves. And he was asleep on the ship, and his disciples came to him, woke him, saying, Lord, save us, for we perish. They had no doubt about Jesus was on the same ship. All they were thinking about was the wave that was coming. They had forgot about the wave, the same wave that was covering them. And making them wet were the same waves that was hitting him too. Amen. He was on the same ship that was being tossed and driven. He was on the same ship that when they saw the tempest coming. And it jacked the ship up and took it down into the wave. He was on that same ship that they was on. But, but, but I want you to understand something. Jesus didn't care nothing about no storm. He just got through yeah. healing folks. He just got through casting out the devils. He just got through speaking over somebody's life. He you know, done all the work of the day. Now he's tired and he's trying to get a little rest now. But somehow, in some way, life always seems to come crashing. Because something has happened that you was unaware of. But I want you to know that Jesus was unaware of this. But he was trying to prove a point to his disciples. It makes no difference about what nature brings. That's right. That's right. That's right. It makes no difference. How cold it is. Makes no difference about the earthquakes. Makes no difference about your financial needs. Uh, right. Makes no difference how old or how young you are. That's right. Amen. We all have to suffer with this tempest. Yeah. 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 This sea that seems to toss yeah. and drives us. All right. We all have to suffer with life. I don't know about y'all, but I got a little old. I get hot too at the same time. Come on. And then another time, my feet get cold and my hands be cold Amen. and my body be hot. Amen. Then sometimes my body be cold and my feet and stuff be hot. I don't know what it be. Somebody say it might be circulation. <laughs> but I know that Jesus is on board. Yeah. 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 Whatever you're going through in the morning, yes. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Right. The best thing that you can do. Is sit down yeah, come on, huh? uh -huh. and say, Jesus, yeah. come on. I need you. Yeah. Every hour, yeah. I need you. Yeah. Walk with me. Yeah. Talk with me. Yeah. I know you're here. Yeah. See, the word of God said you got to stir up the very gift that is on the inside. Yeah. See, 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 when he left here, he's sitting on the right hand of the Father. He left in the Holy Spirit. To lead and guide to keep you. To make sure everything is going functioning right with your spirit, your soul. See, this body is allowed to do anything. If you don't believe it, just live long enough. Sometimes when you sit down and you get up, your leg going to be numb. Sometimes when you sit down and you get up, you get a little woozy, and you get a little dizzy. Sometimes when you wake up in the morning time, you have a film over your eyes. Sometimes when your wife says, did you hear me? You say, no, I didn't hear you. Say it again. Sometimes 
your sugar level gonna go up when you eat certain foods. Amen. Your blood pressure gonna go up when you think about certain things. That's right. Now that you have gotten to the older thing, to the older age, whatever age it is, you got to pull away childish things now. Amen. And you got to pick up Jesus. Yes. Yes. Jesus is made for us. If you don't believe it, just go read it. For God so loved the world. John 3. That he gave his only begotten son. He was created. He was made for us. To show us how to make it in this life. I'm just trying to help somebody. Jesus is still on board. I want you to know that no matter what you're going through in life, no matter how this, this society, society changes, Jesus is still here. Yeah. It don't matter if they lose all faith in him. He be in his sheep. He calls them by their name. They hear yeah. his voice. Yeah. We're living in a time to where everybody is walking away from God. There is a great falling away if you haven't noticed it or not. Yeah. Yeah. But Jesus is still here. Yeah. No matter who comes, who goes, don't give up your faith. Jesus is still on board. Preachers are beginning to preach something else different now. Trying to reach the youth. Come on. When they need to be standing uh -huh. on what God has given them and not trying to fill the church up. Amen. Jesus had 12 faithful ones that was following him. And then he found out one or two ones too faithful. You don't need a whole lot of folks in your circle. Because as you get older, your circle is going to get smaller and smaller anyway. All you need is Jesus. And then it says, the disciple came and said, save us, we perish. And he said unto them, why are you so fearful? We're living in a time where our faith is being tried. Our family members are turning their backs on us. Amen. Our friends and loved ones are turning their backs on us. Our jobs are saying that we are not to, we can't do the job we used to do, so we might have to let you go and put somebody younger in your place. Y'all yeah. might well come on and go with me. The same thing happens in the church houses. When the preachers get older, they say, well, we need a younger preacher to come in because it, it, it regenerates our people so that they'll come back and tell her looking at the old face. Y'all might well come on and go with me. That's why uh, you, we don't have a whole lot of youth in here be, simply because they want something a little bit different so they go and find what they want, not knowing that one day they're going to get over themselves. And they be in that same position that we're in right now. And they're going to have to stand on the word of God. They're going to have to remember what their forefathers had taught them. They're going to have to remember those old hymns because you won't be able to play the same music because the music has changed. Half of the time we don't know what they're saying now. The beat is just too, too big for us now. But in the midnight hour when the trouble comes, we remember those old hymns, those old songs. We remember how mama and grandmama prayed and we find ourselves doing the same thing that we had been taught. So why are we so fearful now? We need to get back to the word of God. Know that the world is changing. Revelation is fulfilling itself. And we think that we got to change because people don't change. No. We change when God said change. We stop when God said stop. We move when God said move. Not because the world has dictated that it's a change that needs to happen. Why are you so fearful that you awaken me? Oh, ye of little faith. 
Then he arose. See, I want y'all to look at how Jesus is. He laid there while the ship was being tossed and driven, waiting for them to call upon. Don't look at me like that. So I even got to talk. <laughs> waiting for them to cause to call him. The songwriter said, try Jesus. He's all right. Amen. Waiting for them to call upon Jesus. Amen. You want to know what's wrong with you? What's wrong with the world? What's wrong with your children? What's wrong with society? What's wrong with the generation? We fail to call. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Then when we call upon him, we don't step the way. Amen. <laughs> we ain't got to listen to nothing he said. We, we, we have closed our ears to Jesus. When we need him the most, we call upon him because we were filled for a little faith. And then when we call upon him, we don't even stay there long enough to hear what he has to say. Amen. You know how it is when you call your loved one? That's a little older than you, you call them and say, Look, I'm, look at here, I'm going through such and such. And then they say, Well, click, you know, going on somewhere. You got ADHD or something, you can't stay focused long enough to get an answer from nobody. Right. Then when they tell you what you need to do, you don't want to hear that. All right, man. Amen. Amen. So then he says, He arose. Y'all listen to me. Mm -hmm. And he rebuked. The wind. Huh? Mm -hmm. He got up and told the wind to stop blowing. Well. Huh? But the sea was still moving, right? Mm -hmm. So he rebuked the wind right. and the sea. That's what the word said. Mm -hmm. Everything began to get still. Uh -huh. yeah. So this is what we have to do when we are have the authority of Christ in our lives and we are in rightful position. I said rightful position with God the Father and Jesus his own Lord. We have the authority to rebuke the wind. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Come on. Yes. Well. The wind is symbolic of our lives All right. and the things that blow upon us. We have the authority to say no. We have the authority to say yes. We have the authority to say get back. We have the authority to close the door. And the seas are those things that washes under us, that, that seem to, to huckle and buck us up, that throw us out of our position with God. We have the authority to rebuke that, whatever that, that is, and to, to eliminate it so that we can continue to walk with God. We got to call upon that which God has placed on the inside of us and begin to work that spiritual thing that God has already given every believer because he gives every believer a measure of faith. And if you have faith as this small as a mustard seed, then you can move now. So if he gave everybody a, a measure of faith, then we can move some stuff. Amen. But the problem is we don't know we got that measure. Because we've been listening to the world tell us how we supposed to be God's people. We've been listening to the world telling us how we supposed to be church people. We ain't giving from God himself. Yeah. 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 See, you can say what you want. Mm -hmm. You can go out here and buy the newest Bible. That have the newest interpretation. That makes it as plain as it can be. Uh -huh. And still don't have the power of God. Amen. 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 You can be under the greatest bishops. The greatest pastors. Well. And still don't have the power. Of God in your life. All right, come on. That's right. You see, God has done something new if you don't recognize it or not. Come on. When Jesus came on the scene, he took the power from the priest. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. 
and gave clear access to each believer Amen. to come yes. to God on his own. Amen. He sealed the door when he gave you the Holy Spirit. Yes. You've been sealed to the day of redemption. Yes. And you have some power on the inside. Now how you make that grow is you got to stay in the word of God. Amen. You got to be faithful to God. I just said church because you can't be faithful to church if you ain't faithful to God. And if you're faithful to God, then you ought to work in somebody's church. Amen. I know I ain't gonna be no whole lot of amen. Right somebody said, well, I got the Holy Spirit. I ain't going to that church. Ain't that full of devils in there? Where your job is. Right there at the church house. Uh, Stars at the household of faith first. Send the word. Go look it up. Then the Bible said, when Jesus rebuked the wind and the sea, and there was a great calm. You know how it is when somebody really finds God? Mm -hmm. They might have been on the drug. Yeah. They might have been poor mongers and liars and cheaters and backstabbers. And they really find connection with God. And when you see them, they're at peace with themselves. All right. They had peace in life and it seemed like they had found another direction. Uh -huh. And you said, what happened to you? And sometimes they'll tell you, I found God. And you said, mm, I get one here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know how we do Come on, amen. When God pulls people into the church house and pull them off the street, yeah. we said, we'll give them a little time and see amen. if they stay or not. Instead of praying. Amen. That God continue in their life. Yeah. All right, all right. That was a great calm that came over them yeah. because Jesus was on board. Amen. And they marveled, saying, "What man of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey?" Yeah. See, my brothers and sisters, the wind and the sea had no had no no choice about the situation. And I want you to know that if you are a believer of God, you don't have any choice about the situation neither. You must obey what God has told you to do. You must obey and stay what God has told you to stay. You must obey and continue to pray. Amen. Continue to read the word. Yes. Continue to worship. Uh -huh. No matter what comes or who comes and who goes uh -huh. in your life, continue to stay with God. No matter how the ship gets. That's right. Yeah. Continue to stay with God. Yeah. Call upon the name of Jesus. That's right. Yeah. There's a little confusion about Jesus was Jesus' name or Joshua. Or, or some people are call him Jesus, or some people might call him something else. But over here in America, we use a, a, a American language uh, uh, interpreted at Jesus as Jesus. Somebody said, well, he, he belongs to another faith group. Now, I'm calling him Jesus as the son of God that was called in the King James Version. I can't go with anybody else because I'm going with what saved me. Jesus. This is the name that I use. I don't care what nobody else called him. I don't speak too many other different languages. American is my base. Language. English is my base language. Yeah. And in English, I call him Jesus. Yeah. Somebody may call God Yahweh. That is in the Old Testament. Uh -huh. And if I spoke that language, I would speak Yahweh and continue on in that language. But I speak English, so I said, Jesus, right. save me. Right. Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus is on board with me. It might mean something different to you. But to me, yeah. Yeah. I call him Jesus. Yeah. You can get mad. Yeah. You can get happy or glad. I don't care. Right, this is how I came to God. Right. Jesus. Yeah. Every time I mess up and go left or go right, Jesus come and gets me. Right. Come on. Yeah. Right. Come on. Jesus is the one that saved yeah. me. Yeah. He is the one that died for me. Yeah. He is the one that made sure that I had somebody with me at all times. Yeah. He is the one that when I fall by 
by the wayside or I backslide. He is the one that brings me back and put me in right position. I'm not calling on nobody else but Jesus. Because Jesus has always been on board in my life. He never led me astray. Jesus has never left me. Jesus has always had an answer for me. He's always working something out. Even when my mind gets in turmoil. You ever had your mind just kiss and turmoil? You don't know whether you're coming or going. Oh, yeah. You're choosing and doing and living the wrong way. Right. But somehow or another, when you get in contact with Jesus, uh -huh. he clears the way for you. Amen. You start directing Amen. people to come to your life. Yeah. You start directing places for you to get the, the right way and get your mind cleared up to where you can continue to serve God of the Bible. Amen. Not God of this life. Of this world. But Jesus, yeah, yeah. He is on board. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Think on them, think on these things. Because we all are on a ship. Amen. Some of our ships are a little older than us. <laughs> Some of our ships ain't built good. Right. Seem like they taking on water. They right. Well. But Jesus is on board. He getting wet too. He just waiting for you to wake him up. So he can make everything peaceful. Amen. Jesus is here. All right. Jesus is on board. So if you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sins, we're going to ask the praise team to come. If you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sins, we're going to ask that you would come down. And we may introduce Jesus to you.
bring spirituality, spirituality be poured over her life, Lord, and in her life. Send your spirit, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We claim it done in her life. In her life. And everything that she touches, Lord, shall be touched for your glory. Everything that she touches, Lord, shall be touched for your glory. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, if there be any amongst us, Lord, that's also seek and pray. We ask the Lord that you go wherever they may be, Lord. Touch them in their hearts, Lord. Touch them in their minds, Lord. Give them the word that which they desire right now. That is righteous for you. Ask the Lord a special blessing, O Lord, over every saint that is in the under the sound of my voice right now, Lord. Give them that which they need right now, Lord. Elevate, Lord. They're the way you need them to be, Lord. So that they can be a blessing unto your people, Lord. In the name of Jesus. We bind the hand of the enemy. He won't have no victory inside of this house. In this place, he would not have victory, Lord. Let your anointing flow from heart to heart, chest to chest, head to head, feet to feet. Let their going in be blessed, and their coming out be blessed from this day forward. Father, we ask the Lord for the blessing, Lord, over those, Lord, that are in the convalescent homes. Those, Lord, that are in the hospital room. One has heart trouble, Lord. Another may can't breathe right, Lord. Touch them in their lungs, Lord. Touch them in his heart, Lord. Touch them in their minds, Lord. Give them that which they need, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for all that was said and done. We thank you, Lord, for your blessing. Now, Lord, as we leave this altar, we don't leave the way we can. We leave in your blessings, Lord. We leave in your anointing, Lord. In the name of Jesus. If you believe me, say amen. 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 Now, let us stand to our feet. I speak God's blessing over you in this house. Go in the peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. May your goings be blessed. May your coming ins be blessed. Henceforth and forevermore. Let the church say amen. Amen. amen.